Hello everyone and thank you so much for stopping by the channel. My name is Celicia and I also go by Creativity by T and happy last day of April. I am going to be sharing with you my latest make which is Simplicity 9707 which is this button front pattern right here. So if you are interested in hearing all about this and my experience while I make it, please continue to watch. Simplicity 9707 UB. Okay, everyone. So, as I said, I am coming to you to share this recent make, which is Simplicity 9707. And I will go ahead and start off with my why. Why I made it. So, I made this shirt for three particular reasons. The first reason is because So Your View, they put it on my radar. I had seen this before had picked up picked it up in the wrong size so I went to uh, Joann's and exchanged it for the right size packet but that is the reason why it was put on my radar so your view which is a monthly challenge and it's hosted by Monica of that so Monica every month they pick out a pattern and this was that the second reason why I picked out this pattern is because I want more button front shirts in my wardrobe while I could go out and just purchase some I know I can but I don't see a lot in the different prints that I prefer you know I don't see a whole lot of them that screams my personality so I want to start making more that you know so that I can customize my wardrobe in the way I'd like to. The third reason why I went ahead and made this is because I was watching a review on YouTube and it was about a fragrance that I am interested in and this girl had like I could see her from like here up and she had on the most beautiful bun front blouse and I was like you know what I gotta have that in my life and it looked to me like it was vintage now I couldn't find any vintage uh, fabric I looked online on Amazon to see if they had any vintage sheets and things like that but they cost way too much <laughs> for my liking so I went to Joann's even though I have all this I'm surrounded by fabric <laughs> even though I, I am surrounded by fabric I went to Joann's anyway because I didn't have like the big roses that I prefer and that is what I have now. I was able to find the roses. Um, there were ser several different types of prints, but this is the one I preferred that looked the most like it. So that is my reasons. Those are my reasons, I should say, why I made the top. So let's talk about this. This pattern is Simplicity 9707. I believe the other size packet, which is for the larger women's size, is 9708. If it's not, I will correct it and I will put the patterns in the screen. But this is a, a Mrs. Shirt pattern and it is considered easy to sew. Now, is it easy to sew? Yes, it is. Um, but some people do get discouraged when it comes down to things that take longer to sew. Just because it's easy to sew doesn't mean that it is not going to take long. So for me, one of the reasons why I felt like the So You View gave me that push is because although I want more button fronts in my uh, garment uh, collection, in my wardrobe, it takes a very long time for me to make button front garments. It takes me at least seven to eight hours every single time to make a button front, even for my little children. Now, that is a little discouraging for me, so I looked it up. The average amount of time that it takes to make a button front and I found someone's blog and she put six to seven hours for me it's a, about an hour longer so it is in the same range so it did make me feel a little bit better that it's not just me it's just the process in general now even though this pattern is considered easy to sew like I said it took just as long as it would if it were not and easy to sew pattern. The difference between this easy to sew pattern and like the regular button front uh, tops that I have made is the techniques that you use. There's easier techniques. For instance, there's no continuous lap. You do a little snipping to overlap this area to give it that look. There's um, not a collar stand or a, a regular collar. It's just a collar, <laughs> but it pops. You like that? <laughs> I love how it pops. Hey, and this makes it look more vintage. <laughs> 
anyway <laughs> yeah so there's different little things like that involved the one thing I will say that I liked or enjoyed about this uh, pattern is that it does have a yoke um, and a yoke facing and it was done with the burrito method so it was clean um, on the inside in that area um, but like I said there's just some things that are not you know as professional I should say because it is considered easy to sew and the techniques are a little bit different so that did frustrate me just a little bit because the continuous fake continuous lap I should say um, construction left some raw edges and there's really no way to clean that up okay not the way that they have you snip in and I think I took little video clips if I did I will insert those clips but um there's really no way to clean it up because it's just like a half an inch of it on each side that's showing where you just clip into your fabric and you're folding it over and then you see like a stitch on top and i just did not like that um so yeah so that was problematic for me i'm, I'm just looking at it to see if i could show you real quick but um yeah i'm not I, i'll just show you in a clip that i'll insert Okay, so the reason why I say that I do not care about the construction of this is because, well, I, I pinned this here, but yes, this is a separate uh, cuff, but there is no uh, continuous lap. So basically, instead of there being like a continuous lap, what they make you do is cut into the fabric and then you stitch it down well when you stitch it down then you have like these little raw edges right here and even though they're being covered they still unravel and so to pin it you see my markings here because i haven't put the uh, pin um, holes or, i'm sorry the button holes in yet but you just overlap it like this and then it'll look like that okay so no you don't see it but like if you want your garments to look professional I just don't I just don't prefer this look because I have made it the other way before and I like the other construction best so I mean yeah and then like when you turn this in like some of my facing is showing because it just didn't line up properly and yeah I can cut this off which I will trim it down and I actually think this side uh, worked out a little bit better. Sorry, I just touched the camera. It's moving. So let me see if I can show you here. Yeah. But then you still see like the unravel ends here. And so while I know that, yeah, I could have um, used a serger and then that wouldn't be happening. I, di I didn't know. Okay. I've never constructed a shirt like this. I have used those easy shirt patterns for my children but they weren't constructed like this so while this is easy i feel like it's easy because of the techniques used uh, but i don't prefer the overall finish of the instruction but i still think it's going to look cute i'm it's just a personal preference so um yeah so for the actual collar the collar is just one piece cut twice as you can see here and with those pieces you just put interfacing on two of the collar pieces and then you put uh, leave the other one plain now this is right here is considered the collar the facing is the back that does not have interfacing as you can see this looks gorgeous okay but this back is is wonky i haven't pressed it yet but it's still wonky and i never ever get these issues when i use a collar and a collar stand i don't get these issues they come out looking like this every time um my stitching here is not perfectly aligned but that's okay it's in the inside um but this you know part came out fine and so did this but yeah i'm just you know this is how it looks when you put it on it curls over so you're not going to see that, but I, I still don't prefer that. But it is easier than using a collar and a collar stand. 
okay um the other thing is there's a self-facing so there's just extra fabric and you just fold it over a couple of times uh, for the placket uh, that i do like sometimes but the reason why i don't like it all the time is because if you want to contrast your placket like i'm going to be making the green shirt but i couldn't use this pattern because i want the placket to be in the satin while the rest of the shirt is in a different fabric and i can't do that when it's like this so um but it is easier i will i will give it that i'm just overall you know I, I just i don't know maybe i'm used to the other way but the other way is a lot more cleaner it looks more professional now this is a nice little thing with the uh pattern detail i should say not a little thing a little detail <laughs> with this pattern that you do have a um a yoke on the inside that's finished off with the burrito method so it looks pleat on the inside nice and clean around here so you know that gives it a very very polished look and so i just the rest wish that the rest was as polished as this area right here but i you know overall i am happy with the top when i was frustrated with this i think it was more so because of how long it was taking me to get it completed i did complete it in two days um but i will say like with this collar it's very nice it's very stiff i used if i can find yeah my interfacing i had talked about this interfacing i did a, like a short video this is pelon 950f if you could see it right here and i did use that interfacing a lot of people say don't use interfacing um, that's going to be too heavy and will change the drape of your fabric you know it's not supposed to change the drape i agree when i looked at my other store bought button fronts they have not changed the shape but um this was thicker and it did change the drape but that is what i like i prefer that so um i'm very satisfied with the outcome of the interfacing that i use uh, but i will say that because of the construction of this collar i feel like the facing part of the collar which is the part without interfacing on there is a little wavy now you can't see it because it's turned under and i, I don't feel like flipping it up but you can't see it so for some people that's not a problem but for me i take pride in the work that i do and so that did bother me a little bit but um i was looking at that so monica's page because they had a sew along for this on the sew your view challenge i didn't get to watch it but um she had uploaded like a recap or something like that and she had mentioned that the lady that did the sew along set to interface both sides and it kind of eliminates that those types of things so i will try that next time I am going to keep this pattern i am going to make it again um but like i said when i was frustrated while making it i was like i'm gonna right throw this thing away now one thing that i didn't like about it that made me feel that way is because there's no shaping there's no darts in the back like the you know the little fish darts for shaping and there's none in the front either but this is a, a loose fitting top it doesn't say it in the description but it's it's obvious okay it's super obvious all of this is loose fitting so there's some there's some bonuses to that with certain button front tops if I don't grade it out on the sides you know above my waist then I will get that gaping right here always I wear these high, high waisted um, my pants so that's why I was so high but anyway I will always get this gaping here when it is a more loose fit, I don't get the gaping. However, I do have the poofiness in the back, which is what I don't like. Um, so I do like that for this. And with this blouse, this the print of the blouse being so dressy, I feel like it did not like take away, uh, the bagginess didn't take away from the fabric. You know, it still looked good, still looked dressy and things like that. 
so the fabric types that it calls for is like silky types crepes rayons cottons you know all those type of fabrics and I did cut a size 16 and the size 16 was the finished bust measurement of 46 and a half and so that worked out uh, for me because my bust is a 45 even so it just gave me a little bit of room as well so for the notions that you're going to need you're going to need about for my view and I made view B I didn't even mention which view that I made I made view B I uh, well, I needed nine buttons I needed five for the front going down and, and one of them is like way up here but I honestly probably shouldn't even have done that because I know I'm never going to use it and then four two on each side for the wrists and I know that some people that are like how is it easy to sew and it's buttons and buttonholes you know well for some people that is easy but if that's something that you have not done before then consider using cam snaps that are very easy to uh, put on your top so you can use regular snaps or you know anything like that or you could just wear it open like a duster if that is something that you prefer as well the only thing that I did different was I put my buttons on the right side of my shirt and the buttonholes on the left side and I did that because I liked I just wanted to do it because I felt like that side looked better and the other thing that I did was I finished for the pocket here I like put those little rectangular looking things here on detail in the pocket i'm not sure if you can see that in the corners to just reinforce it a little bit to stay on better but all in all it was very easy to put together i am very satisfied with this look i totally got the look i was going for and i'm i'm just glad that i made it so I paired this top with some ready to wear pants and I did purchase those from Amazon and I can put that in the link below if you like those. These are some high waisted paper bag pants. I could not find any fabric <laughs> that I wanted to use to make these pants and I didn't really have a good pattern either. I'm somewhat satisfied with them. They're just a little bit um just a couple things about them that I don't enjoy but I mostly enjoy the pants so and then I um paired them with my taupe heels as well so yes those are my pairings in my styling videos I showed you how you can style the top different ways you can wear it just completely out you can wear it with a half tuck with everything else out or you can wear it with a front tuck and everything else out you know all those things so this first look has me wearing my shirt tucked into my pants completely all the way around and this is generally the look that I go for when I'm wearing my button front shirts and then the second look just has like half of it pulled out and the rest of it tucked in. Then I have half tucked in with all of the rest of it out just one half in the front and then this look right here has the whole front tucked in and the rest out that is a look that I wear often and then I pulled it completely out so that I have like a totally relaxed look and that's the way I look if I dress down so I hope you enjoyed the styling video and just the video in general talking about this pattern there are lots of reviews on this pattern there's lots of people that have made this before and most recently someone uploaded a video where they made this for their mother as a jacket so that's an option as well but I really like it for the button front for myself personally. So let me know your thoughts about this. Remember that whenever I make a video, I always upload a blog post for the most part, and there will be a full detailed pattern review on my blog that is linked in the comments below, and I will also pin it so that it's easy to find, and I'll put it in the description box. If you enjoyed this video, go ahead and give me a thumbs up, a like. If you have not done so already, please subscribe, and um, hit the great notification bell so that you can be notified of future videos and yeah that's all I have for you today again I hope you enjoyed it and I will see you in the next video bye